the scrap box happened to have a very useful chunk. Very rusty, but uh, the initial thing was just to clean up the various faces and get it ready. First job was to uh, mill out a slot to the edge of the lathe rail to suitable depth and width. This is part the way through. And then we move on. Now this is more or less the uh, pretty much finishing cut. We've removed material from this portion which is for relief for the rack. The probe on the saddle was used to make a small mark as a reference for a later 7-16th through hole. We're going to need a threaded rod and uh, we've got to turn down here to prepare to make a 7 16 by 20 threads per inch. We're taking a pass here to point cut the uh, 7 16 20 thread and uh, we'll go most of the way with turning but then for simplicity we're going to run a die nut which will take us pretty much to a finished profile and hopefully save too much messing around. We'll part the piece off leaving just a very small amount so we can break the piece and then we can turn that round pop it back in the chuck and uh, face it off and add a small chamfer. We need a long 7 16 through hole and uh, we're starting off from the mark we made using the saddle probe. Putting a quarter inch down first at the start and then we'll switch to 7 16 it's a long job, it's a long way to go through, but uh, we're not bothering with reaming, this will give us a fairly good clearance hole for the uh, threaded rod. Time to check things out and see how it's going. The reason for using 7 16 was half inch would have been a bit, just a bit too big. You can see from the end that the wall thickness is quite limited. Not much slack, quite adequate. Moves pretty freely, quite pleased with that. And the end there we've made so that it sits pretty much flush against the end of the block. Now we've got the 7 16 uh, through hole. We want to mill out a slot to receive a knurled vernier scale, which will be threaded 7 16 20. And just using a roughing end mill for the purpose to get down to the depth that we need, which is now approaching. We're getting close to the end depth. And then we'll swap to a finishing cutter just taking five thou off the bottom clean that up a bit and then we'll clean up one side just taking a, basically probably only about a thou clean up pass another look at where we've got to We've got the slot now for the vernier scale and we've got to just recheck dimensions before we make the vernier. Check the width of the slot and the depth below the thread which is all quite critical. Another piece of bar stock, we've already drilled that out. Tapping it 7 16 20, starting with a chuck and then uh, 
run down to bottom out by hand. Quite adequate. This is for the vernier. Some initial markup. This is a, an approximate length mark to go by temporarily. This second mark, I don't know what the heck he's doing <laughs> because it's not what we use. So having decided on what we are going to use, we can turn down this part of the profile which is going to be the area for uh, engraving when we get to that. More or less a final cut. We add a very small relief. This is for clearance between the vernier scale and the index mark on the block. Not parting off completely, but this is giving us a groove, clearance groove ready for adding a knurl. Using the spindle handle for the knurling operation, this is virtually the last pass, just to make sure we've got enough depth. And then we can have a look at it and dab some of the oil off. This is a bit of info regarding the engraving. What you're looking at is a double-ended expanding arbor which takes an old gear wheel which was turned down and grooved and then with some interesting math embedded with a hundred ball bearings. <laughs> and the part I'm holding goes in the back of the spindle so this gives us actually a very useful divide by 100. Now at the back end of the spindle the uh, arbor is tightened up, expanded, holding the division ring and also locked into the back of the spindle itself. Then we have a detent which has been profiled, you might just about see it, to go in between each ball and that's threaded into a block above. It's a bit slow and tedious but it does work. Now the engraving process, very very slow. It raises a burr at the end of each scratch shall we say, but that's all going to be cleaned up. And once we've gone round 50 times, this is because we're using a 20 pitch thread. Once we've gone round 50 times, we come back and do every fifth one, which will take us to the longer graduation, ready for marking up for figures. Now the engraving's done, just some final polish. We've got rid of all the burrows, and uh, the end result is fairly satisfactory. Now we can part this piece off and uh, we'll pop it back in the chuck just to face off from the parting and finish the dimension. Just trying the vernier in place. Turns pretty good. Running on the thread quite nicely. There's a little bit of end play there which I'm not too worried about because we're going to put a little detent ball in the end to tension it. More of that later. We're putting a slot in the uh, threaded rod for a small eighth end mill. <laughs> One of any two that I've got so taking it pretty careful. And uh, now we're getting down towards pretty much the last cut and it uh, finishes up pretty clean, quite reasonable. We drilled one hole for the day turn ball, <laughs> but it was just a few thou close to the outside and uh, not quite adequate for what I wanted, so we've drilled another slightly closer in. Just about works out. It's slightly touch and go actually.
tapping 2BA for a set screw that was just very convenient so I went with that thread does the job alright and then we modified the set screw later now we got the set screw in place slightly larger nut than I wanted but that's all I had so that's tracking pretty good in the uh, slot in the rod very very slight movement there but it's not enough to, to matter so it's running pretty good and that was machined at the end to suit the slot and then the vernier itself well we've got two holes only one of which I'm going to use but uh, we'll have some fun and games getting the spring and the ball in that'll probably be an awkward job we'll probably lose one or the other part here's a closer look <laughs> tiny ball tiny spring my number stamps were way too large to be practical on this so I'm using a small hand engraver it's a bit rough and ready but uh, it's about the only way I could get the numbers on quick polish on the rather crude engraved figures but it smooths them off quite nicely now we'll try out the function of the vernier see if it turns alright and moves the rod which tracks nicely the detent ball gives just enough tension so that when you leave it in one position it stays put that works quite well. It's a piece of quarter drill rod. We cut a tiny little slice off to make this little slug. And the idea is that we're going to uh, put that into the center of the end boss. We were going to do a case harden, but I think this is a better method. Just centering up on the end boss here because we're going to uh, mill out the pocket for the drill rod slug. We'll take the pocket down just deep enough so that the slug can be loctited in and be just perhaps a thou proud of the uh, surface. Now we need a pair of locking screws to lock down onto the way. Another piece of stock here. We'll turn that down to quarter. I'm going to put a quarter BSF thread on it. That's uh, quarter 26. So we'll use the chuck to get a start on it. Turns out not to be the best choice of thread actually. <laughs> we'll see that later on. So having got a start there we can finish by hand, get quite a nice clean thread. We'll cross drill for uh, 3 T bars, we'll do it in the lathe, actually do both on this piece of stock whilst it's in the chuck. And having parted off, flip it round. This is one of them, just face off, put a bit of chamfer on, and then we're pretty much ready to go. Well, my favourite quarter BSF, <laughs> not so successful because it turns out that my quarter BSF taps are all pretty much clapped out. <laughs> so I made a start in the uh, machine here, but in the end I took took it out and finished by hand with great difficulty. My 3 sixteenths rod stock had a sort of grey coating and uh, I've left it as it is because if I'd polished it it would have made them a slack fit. So we then got the smallest component, the ball, the spring 
and that's a look at the end of the set screw which uh, we turned that down to an eighth by a hundred thou deep and that suits for the uh, detent for the slot instead of brass for the softing for the uh, fixing screws we got some nice little leather plugs these will do well and then <laughs> you might see here see the ball just <laughs> And he just made it. There's the uh, inset piece of drill rod. That worked out quite nicely. And then the leather slugs were pushed into holes ready to use. So, time to try it on the lathe-ways. Yes, it holds good. The uh, leather pads do a nice job. But, Here's my backlash. And it's going the wrong direction. So, do we shim it? That was the first thought. But of course here you can see as the probe comes up and touches, there's all that slop. And a shim might do it, but we've got a better idea. Well, the answer was to uh, <laughs> flip things 180 degrees. So the only problem is now the figures read backwards, which is no big deal. But we've machined out here, which has given us a little shelf, and we've got a scribe mark on that, which is much easier to read from above. So that's a bonus. Instead of having the old mark on the side so that makes legibility a lot easier and the backlash of course now is basically non-existent because of the pressure from the detent ball much better I can live with backwards figures maybe I should make a new vernier but that may or may not happen otherwise it does exactly what I want and uh, quite a pleasing end result and the securing screws have been shortened slightly which was suggested because if the leather disappears they won't go in far enough for the metal to hit the ways and cause damage so there we are well this is all very compressed hopefully you can follow it all right We've actually shoehorned about 30 gig of clips into uh, the time constraint, less than 20 minutes. So I hope it makes adequate sense. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs>